Our first guest tonight is one of the founding members of the Handsome Men's Club, going all the way back to 2010. Now, he has risen to the top of Sexy Mountain. Please welcome people's sexiest man alive, Mr. Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. What took them so long is the I, only question I have. I don't know. I'm just happy they made a decision, and it was me this year. I'm they very grateful. They finally made the right decision. Yes. And it's true. You do get more handsome every You're single year. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. You do. <laughs> they waited. Like, it's like a, uncorking a bottle of fine wine. They decided to wait till just the right year. That's it. Now, next year, you'll be a mess. You'll yeah, be on I'll the be downslide. But it turns really quickly. You have. And you know what? There's been some foreshadowing of yeah, this. And we've been close a few times. You've not only been close, they put you on the cover That's of like one Clooney. of George Clooney's years. Yes. They put you on the cover uh, when this vomit face <laughs> won Sexiest Man Alive. <laughs> You were in the little box, and now, oh my goodness, here you are with the whole cover to yourself. Thank you very much. Amazing. You, huh? you and Priscilla Presley. That's yeah. right. Never give up on a dream. <laughs> How did your family react to the dream? They laughed quite they hard. They did? They were like, no, seriously, who is it? I'm like, no, it's me. That was good. <laughs> On the Reality day, came crashing in. When you do the photo shoot for Sexiest Man Alive, I'm yeah. curious, do the, does the photographer and do the people know why they're shooting you? Because I know it's very secretive, right? Right, you're not allowed to talk about it at all. You're right. not allowed to mention it. So everybody signs these disclosures where you're not allowed to say what we're doing. And but why they we're did doing know it. that that's why they were there. The people that were at the shoot did know, yes. Uh -huh. And they feel they have to know so they can give it a little extra something? Yeah, I guess so. It's like the lighting is a little different, the energy. And it's electric. Leading up to the photo shoot, do you feel like pressure to be like, I don't know, whatever, to maybe you like- fast for a month. Did you really? Yeah. 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 Is that right? No bread products, I worked out. So you sacrificed. It's a sacrifice, for us. it's a lot of work. Not for us, for people, I For people, say. I did for the people. <laughs> I fasted and went to the gym. Now, I remember many years ago <laughs> when Ryan Reynolds was Sexiest Man. Yes, and still very sexy. You made an appearance on uh, our program, and you were very upset. Destroy. Without any further ado, the Sexiest Man Alive is... Ryan Reynolds. Yes. Yes. So why Ryan? Ryan is, um, he definitely has a Are sense you of certification. <laughs> Um, you know, oh um, the proposal, yeah. And he's sitting up against the green light. No! 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 You had to be chased. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was really good. The therapist was really kind to me after that. It took me about five years to work through. The prison had the, a therapist for you? Yeah, That's they, good. Yeah, that was good. I had uh, to stay away from him for quite a few years. <laughs> <laughs> but now I can kind of get close to him again. Has last year's sexiest man, Chris Evans, called to concede? Has he? No, I haven't spoken to him yet. You haven't spoken I'm, to I'm him? I'm hoping I, when, when I get off stage tonight, that I'll get a call. Well, I hope he's a big enough person to give you a call and to be gracious about I'm this. I'm sure he will be. Because it can be a, bit, a little bit of a bummer, and you're probably looking ahead to this. I mean, listen, it happens. It you does, know? and you have to enjoy the moment when you have it. Yes, yes, that's right. The year right. goes by so quickly. Not just sexy, wise what? also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what's going on with you and racing cars? Are you still racing? Yes, I am. I had a race uh, a few weeks ago. I did the Carrera Panamericana, which is a road race in Mexico. I got to do a few stages down there with that. That was in a GT4 RS. Uh, it was wonderful. I had a great time. It, you love doing that. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I mean, what's really great is you have the Formula One, the Drive to Survive. I don't know if you've seen that documentary. Yeah. It's really great about... What, what's happening inside the, the world of motorsport from the perspective of the team owners, the drivers, and the fans. And it's like that. It's just you never know what's going to happen during a race. It's The drama is constantly unfolding, and the, just the physical and mental and challenging. Will you be going to Las Vegas? It's crazy what they got going on in Las Vegas the weekend after Yeah, that. it's going to be a night race in Vegas in two weeks. I think they just finished up a great race in Brazil last weekend. And then first time in Vegas, night race coming up, I think, on the 18th, 17th or 18th, Saturday night. Or whatever this might be a, a dumb question, but have you raced in a Formula One type event? Have you had the chance to race those cars? I've done support races like uh, Carrera Cup, Porsche Cup, um, Super Cup before one of the races at Spa. 
I did that, but I've never been in a Formula One car. I, was, I had an opportunity when they opened up the, the track in Texas, Coda, and what they do is a, a recon lap. They go out to make sure all the systems are working, so they had the professional driver do that. Halfway through the lap, the car broke down. And I was ready to go, and that was my moment. I didn't get a chance to. Do you drive. think now that I know, right? It's heartbreaking. <laughs> you think now that you're the sexiest, you will things will change, and somebody will let you into the car? You know, I hope so. I'm going <laughs> to lobby for it. As you can see, I never give up on a dream. So eventually, no. by the time I'm 90, I'll get a chance to do a hot lap in a Formula One car. You don't ever give up on a dream. I mean, this is. I mean, this is. <laughs> the movie, for those who remember Patrick's appearance in Meatballs 3. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This, this who great. could have ever guessed, besides you, that yeah. this would... That was then and now. One that's day great. turn out to be the sexiest man alive. Yeah, that's a lot of hard work and age. This was the original title of Ted Cruz's new book. Did you know that? That's right, that's right. That's right. He wanted the rights. You got the Dempsey Center. This yeah. is something you did in, to pay tribute to your mom. Yes. Yes. So the Dempsey Center is a, a place where we take care of people who have been impacted by cancer. We don't treat the disease. We treat the person holistically. It's sort of called wraparound care. So if a person has been diagnosed, we try to support them in any way possible, as well as the caregivers, which is an important thing to do. And the work that we do at the center is uh, of no cost to them. So we do counseling. Uh, nutrition, uh, mindfulness, uh, whatever the person needs. We simply ask them, what can we do to help support you in that journey? Do you walk around in scrubs pretending to be a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, it, depending if someone's getting treated at a hospital, I will go do that, and it surprises everybody, so that's fun. The last time you were here, which was, I think, around a year ago or so, yes. I think you were um, teaching, your twin boys were about to get their driver's license. Yes. Right? Yes. Did they get their driver's license? One did, one hasn't. One's oh, about. great. Oh, no. <laughs> That's... So one's driving the other one around all the time. Is that right? Yes. That has got to be one of the worst things about being a twin, is you're compared constantly to the other kid. Yes, but he's really happy not to drive. One of them is very happy not to drive and to be driven by the other one. He likes that very much. The so one's in the front, one's in the back. So he's there's riding around dynamic. like he's got a chauffeur. He's got a chauffeur, he's picking out cars, and he still doesn't have his license yet. But I think he'll get it in January. But my uh, one son has his driver's license. In so January. the next test is, he next time he's able to take the test is in January? Yes. And for you, when you've got a son who is unable to drive, is that like LeBron, like if his son couldn't play basketball or something like that? Does this drive you crazy? Well, no, no. He's motivated now to drive. He wants to drive, so he's driving very well. He drove me into town the other night, you know, so I was actually impressed with his ability. His situational awareness was good. He wasn't going too fast. He was gentle on the brake, so he's, he'll be all right. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you have some really detailed it's really hard. instructions. I, I don't like sitting in the passenger seat. Even driving here, you know, we had a driver take us here today, and it's always very hard. Do you ever switch spots with, like, the cab driver or anything like that? A, a couple times I'd really like to switch yeah, positions right. and just let me drive, and I'll get you there. Would you want your sons driving those race cars that you drive? I would prefer them doing that um, on a track than on the road. And I think that's the big thing we discuss a lot. It's like you cannot mess around on the streets. And yet in Las Vegas now, they've basically turned the strip into a racetrack. I mean, yeah. it's, the, it's the street. Like, it's where people, how they drive to work and get to the airport. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting to see the race there. Yeah, it is going to be pretty yeah. crazy, yeah. Indeed. Well, it's great to see you. Congratulations. Great to see you. Thank you very I'm much. Glad that, Thank you. I'm glad that they finally woke up and they said, oh, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm very happy. Hello, about. McDreamy. There yeah. we go. Yeah, <laughs> And, oh, you have a movie coming out at the end of the year, right? Can yeah. you mention that, or are we not allowed to? One I can mention. The other one I can't mention. Mention the one that you can. So I did the Ferrari movie. Yeah, uh, right. With, uh, Michael Mann directed That's that. the one you can mention? That's the one Okay, I can good, because you did. Yes, I did yes. that. And I got to play Oh, that. yeah, that's going to be good, right? Yes. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's actually the, the, my favorite movie I've ever been a part of. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of humanity in it. The dynamic, the human dynamic with Ferrari and his... Uh, relationships with his wife, his, his lover, and the racing community, and his journey to kind of realize his dream at all cost. Wow, there you go. You really love these cars. Oh, I love it. It's, it takes yeah. place in 1957, over three months prior to the Mille Miglia, which is this, it was a, an epic road race in Italy, very dangerous. Uh, in 1957, it was the last year of that race. It was a tragic uh, crash during that race, and they ended that. It's race. great to see you. Patrick great Dempsey, you. people's sexiest man alive. The issue comes out on Friday. We'll be right back with the host of Pod Save America.